In the last section of chapter 7 in the book that I'm using, um, they, they throw in some stuff that I think would be better off in chapter 5, but that's okay. We'll just throw it in here. It's kind of a grab bag. It doesn't have necessarily belong here, um, but who knows exactly where it belongs. Okay, we're going to talk about simple machines. The book lists six simple machines we're going to talk about. Three simple machines, and the first simple machine we've seen quite a bit of, it is the ramp. And basically, what it comes down to is, if, if there's no friction, then it takes more force for me to lift this straight up than it does for me to roll it up the ramp. So this is not a very heavy object, but if it was an extremely heavy object that I was not able to just lift, I could set up a ramp and then at some angle I could find a point where I was strong enough to push it up the ramp. So by creating a ramp, I use less force to push it up the ramp than I do just lifting it straight up. But there's got to be a trade-off. The equation that comes in is work equals force times distance. So however much work I do here, I have to do at least as much work this way. And so if I'm getting an advantage from having less force, then I pay the price by having a longer distance. Okay. Same thing with pulleys. Right here, I have a set. I basically have a four rope system. So there's basically four ropes that are pulling on this mass. And so I can pull on the rope and the mass goes up. Now because there's because of the way that I've got the pulley system, it takes less force for me to pull the rope than the force of gravity on here. If this is 500 grams, so it's got a, it's about five newtons, it actually should only be taking me about one and a quarter newtons to pull on the rope. So it takes me less force to pull on the rope. Of course, once again, we have a trade-off, and the trade-off is that if I want this to go up half a meter, I've got to pull like two meters a rope. So I have to pull a lot of rope, but that's okay. Practically speaking, if I have a mass that's way, way, way too heavy for me to haul up, so if I've got something that weighs 400 pounds, well, I can't just if I just hang on a if I just hang on the end of a, a rope that's got a 400 pound force in it, I'm not going to go down. The rope's going to go up with me attached to it. So if I have to lift something that weighs 400 pounds by pulling down on a rope, if I have these, this setup, then the force that's in the rope right here, my hand is only 100 pounds, and so then I can grab hold of the, of the rope and I can pull 100 pounds, but I have to pull four times as far. Okay, so there's pulley systems, and again, these are best played with. Um, I highly recommend that you play with, that you find them and play with them rather than just watch them in the video. Last thing we're going to talk about is a lever. And so basically on a lever, I've got a situation, same thing, force times distance equals force times distance. If I want to lift this, if I want to lift this mass off of the table, I can apply a force with my right hand. And so when I apply that force with my right hand, the mass goes up. 
because my right hand is a lot further away from the fulcrum than the mass, then it's easier. There's, there's not a lot of force required to, to uh, push this lever down with my right hand. So I can lift, once again, I can, this would be like a rock bar. You can lift very, very heavy rocks using an iron bar and this method. And again, this force over this distance, so this force times this distance, is equal to the force of my right hand times the distance that my right hand has to travel. So, very brief introduction to those. And uh, once again, this is lab stuff that, you know, really, if you want to learn physics, you really should have, be in the lab and putting your hands on things and taking measurements with spring scales, etc., etc.